Hello, First Church family and friends. It is great to be back with you. Welcome back to our series on the topic of hope. Today I'm going to be sharing from Jeremiah chapter 29, and I'd love for you to pull out your Bible and have it turned and opened uh, to that section so that you can follow along with me when the time is right. And in today's passage, we're going to learn that hope reorients when we are disoriented. Hope reorients when we are disoriented. What do you think of when you hear the word disorientation? Maybe there was a time in your life when you were physically, literally lost, and you didn't know which direction to go. Or maybe there was a time when you were figuratively lost. You had a big decision before you, and you didn't know what the right decision was. And and so you felt stuck, confused, caught up in, in the chaos of what was before you. I can think of some extreme examples of disorientation from history. The first that comes to mind is is, uh, the story of those who were uh, taken from Africa and brought to the Americas and enslaved, who who were brought to a strange and unfamiliar land and forced to live a life that was harsh and cruel, oftentimes separated from their loved ones and even having horrible atrocities like their children taken from them. Or I think of scenes uh, like those from uh, Nazi Germany where Jewish men and women and children were were forced into train cars and brought to the front gates of concentration camps where they were then divided up and never saw their family members or loved ones again. I can't even possibly begin to imagine what it would have felt like to be in any of those scenarios. Uh, My life has no comparison Uh, But in today's story, we're going to see uh, the people of God, the people of Israel, at a time in their lives when they experienced great disorientation. They had been uh, conquered by the Babylonians, and many of them had been taken as captives, as exiles into Babylon, where they found themselves now in an unfamiliar land, surrounded by strange customs and, and, and traditions, and a strange, um, a strange religion where different gods and goddesses were worshipped. And the desire of the Babylonians was to enculturate those they captured and make them like themselves. And so the people of Israel found themselves in this challenging place of tension where they sought to retain their cultural identity, most of all their relationship with Yahweh, the God of Israel, and, and yet found themselves being pulled by the Babylonian culture surrounding them. And it's into this scenario that God speaks these words through the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah sends these words to the leaders of Israel in Babylonian exile, to the priests and the prophets and the others who are in positions of influence and leadership. And beginning in verse 4, this is what God says through the prophet Jeremiah. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there, do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. In verse 10, this is what the Lord says, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, 
and will bring you back to the place from which I have carried you into exile. When I read passages like this, one of the first questions I ask is, how would I have responded if I had been in this situation? How would you have responded if you had been in the same place that the people of Israel found themselves at this point in their story? I would have been longing for a return to the familiar, to be brought back to my homeland where where I knew what was what and I knew how things worked. I would have felt anger at the failure of, of my people's leaders for failing to protect us from these Babylonian captors. I would have felt anger and resentment and bitterness toward the Babylonians for for capturing me and and my family and my neighbors and friends and bringing me to this strange place. I would have felt great feelings of loss and grief, loss of the customs that that I was used to, loss of, of things like familiar foods and even smells and sounds that I was used to. How would you have felt if you were in this place of great disorientation? And then God speaks these words of hope through the prophet Jeremiah. And I find God's message somewhat surprising. He doesn't say what I would have said if I had been in his shoes. He doesn't give a message of hope that follows the rules of human logic. God doesn't say, I'm coming soon to make everything right again. He doesn't convey an elaborate escape plan to the people of Israel. He doesn't say to them, here's how I will destroy your foes, the Babylonians. No, he gives a very different message to his people at this juncture in their lives. And in his words, we hear a message of hope. A message of hope that reorients his people in a time of disorientation. And he expresses that message through three powerful threads. God speaks about purpose, he speaks about plans, and he speaks about presence. God's message of hope reorients when we are disoriented. Hope is is powerful. Hope is it's even tangible in, in many ways when it's true and, and real and, and we feel it within ourselves. Hope is, is like a compass showing us true north in an unfamiliar land. Or hope is, is like a lighthouse casting its beam out upon rough and dark waters, guiding a ship safely to shore. Hope, in, in this instance, as God speaks his message of hope through Jeremiah, highlights the eternal in the midst of the temporal. It highlights for his people the the greater story that they are a part of and and lifts them out of the the muck and the mire of their immediate circumstances. Hope shines a light on the reality that where we are going is not the same as where we are. God's message of hope is conveyed through these threads of purpose and plans and presence. In verse 7, God speaks about purpose. He says to the people of Israel, Seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. His message to the Israelites is not, Turn your backs on those surrounding you. Huddle in tight and, and hold on as long as you can. No, his message is to be active. To be active as his ambassadors in this strange and unfamiliar land. By praying for their captors. By living in such a way that they seek the peace and prosperity of those surrounding them. This is a message of purpose. It's a message to a people who feel without purpose, that you still have purpose in this strange and unfamiliar land. Your purpose is to be my people, to represent the goodness of who I am in the midst of of this, this world, this community that doesn't know me. 
God speaks about plans, and yes, in verse 10, he says, it's when 70 years are completed for this time in Babylon, my plans will be unveiled, but he speaks about plans nonetheless. He says in verse 11, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Now, many of the people hearing this message will not live to see these plans fulfilled. And yet, God's message of hope conveys the truth that he has plans for his people nonetheless. And those plans are described as ones with hope and a future. But quite possibly the most poignant piece of God's message of hope through Jeremiah is about his presence. In verses 13 and 14, we hear these words, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. God is saying to his people, I haven't abandoned you. I'm not beyond your reach. I'm near. And you will find me when your desire is for me. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And it's God's presence beside us in times of disorientation that's the greatest resource to reorient us. The knowledge that God is with us and that God is near gives us our true north when we're lost in a strange land. We see this in the life of Jesus. When God draws near to his people in the most distinct and powerful way ever. A people who again were living in a state of disorientation. God comes near. And through his presence, he reorients them. He gives them a new direction. One that continues to have implications for our lives today. What are the ways that you're experiencing disorientation today? We've all been disoriented to varying degrees by the pandemic we're in. But perhaps the cause of your disorientation goes beyond the pandemic. Disorientation can come from a lot of different sources. The diagnosis of a chronic illness, a major life change, a career change, a move, the death of a loved one, any loss of significance can cause us to feel disoriented. And what did God say to the disoriented in Jeremiah's time? And what might he say to those of us who are disoriented today? I would summarize God's opening charge to the Israelites this way. He says to them, stop. Pause. You're in this flurry of panic because of the place where you are. Stop, take a breath, and look around you. And be who I have called you to be, even in this place. Do not give up, but rather patiently and with quiet resolve, continue to be my people. A people after my own heart. Bring my goodness, my justice, and my wisdom into the place where you are, not by force, but by example. So that those around you might see who I am as you live out your covenant relationship with me. Daniel did this. Daniel was an exile in Babylon, and and he rose to a, a position of great prominence and influence. But he didn't do that through coercion or manipulation. He, he did it by faithfully doing the work that was put before him and by faithfully maintaining his covenant relationship with God. And we can do the same. Hope reorients when we are disoriented. The hope that God extends to us gives us purpose. It it reveals to us his plans. And it reminds us of his presence. And so whatever state of disorientation you're experiencing today, may you hear this message of hope through the prophet Jeremiah. That was spoken many, many ages ago, but holds great relevance to us today. And may these words of hope reorient you in that place of disorientation. 
May God bless you and keep you. Amen. Hi, I'm Pastor Derek from First Church in Wethersfield. And we at the church want to thank you for tuning in to this video. We hope you were encouraged. If you'd like to see more videos like this, just follow the links below. Or you can go to our YouTube channel, First Church Wethersfield. Or if you'd like more information about the church, visit our website at firstchurch.org. Again, thanks for tuning in, and may God bless you.